Well, today we're going to talk about a SEMA PAS M0 controller uh, that's going to communicate Modbus TCP to a Siemens S7 1500. And uh, the code that I have done in this place actually is talking to two uh, controllers. Um, I've only tested it with one because I don't have two controllers. Um, but in theory, it's a mirror image, so it's just renaming of you know tags, variables, things like that. So um, where do I start here? So the first thing we need to do is download the manual. So you need to understand the FH communication protocol. The manual can be found just by typing in your controller. In my case, it's a CMMP ASM0, as we discussed earlier. You download the manual, this right here, and that'll give you that. Um, we also need the software library for that uh, controller. Uh, unfortunately, Festo doesn't list that um, with the M0 because the M0, um, I guess they forgot that Modbus is part of the communication. So I'm just going to type in the word Siemens and do a find on that. And we should find the library. Here it is right here. So this 4.3 library, functional blocks for Siemens, step seven. But in this case, we're using Tia Portal version 14. And you would download that, unzip the files to someplace on your, your nice hard drive. Then you would come into the, the project that you're creating and you would uh, you know, open the library. Basically, you come in here, select the library, say open. It now brings it in. And within the library, you have the various blocks, Modulus TCP, FPC, you have the watch tables, the data types, parameters, control. Okay, so basically what you do is you drag these blocks. Uh, in, in our case here, we need um, these two right here. I drag those and I put them in my little folder here and here. And you need the data types. Prior to that would be the best idea. In this case, all of these. Those get those get dragged to right here. Data types, and then you need these, which get dragged over to here. I think you're getting the idea. Um, don't need don't need that. It's leftover code. So at this time, we've got those mapped in there. We've, we've now brought in these two right here. Drag those over. And we've pretty much got all the blocks at that point. So now, for each axis, you now, to, now need to configure the blocks, and then we'll add some code after the fact. So the first thing we need is the MB client, and we specify the IP address, the controller type, enable the connection, timeout, give it a reference based on, in my case, I added a, a data type here, and reference it to the Modbus buffer, which is the uh, right here. And then you keep bringing in the blocks. So the, the key, point is that there's no nothing else configured on these blocks other than the fmrf because that's sharing the data to this mb client here all all the blocks in here will have the same fmlrf that's the most important part all the rest of the stuff we're not manipulating or adding code in here at all so basically i added all the code all the function blocks here um, 
And then we'll do the exact same thing for the y-axis. So rename everything, of course, to y-axis, OK? Now that we have that, what I decided to do, I, I like this having one, one OB. And I just call these other blocks here. So I'm basically calling these four blocks here. And this one right here is where my code is. My code is designed to give you a very simple, simple concept here. So um, I'm going to, oh, sorry. I'm going to back up a little bit here. Basically, with the libraries, once you've brought all the blocks in, you compile them all. And then uh, as you're adding the blocks, you, of course, give you know unique database names or uh, to each one, and uh, they build up, you know, MB client, you get the Y axis for all the individuals, and then you've got the X, you know, between the two of them. So, if we go to the code now, compile everything. Yeah, you should have zero and zero. I have some warnings, but I don't care what they are. I looked at those, it means nothing to me. It doesn't, doesn't hurt the project. And uh, we'll download now. Okay, so at this point, um, go online. Okay, so we're online. I go to stop mode, yeah. Go back to run mode, just to make sure that we're starting fresh here. So with my code here, okay, I've got some code here. And uh, what my code does is it allows you to select the mode and uh, you know, control, control F2 toggles the bit, so control F2. I'm now in direct mode. I use some other bits here to actually select those resets and so on and so forth. Then we want to, you know, I've got some e-stops and gates here, simulation. So I'll turn that on, turn that on. And now I'm gonna create a drive on. Drive just turned on. It should have homed automatically, but uh, before we do that, I, I haven't discussed the FCT configuration yet. So prior to using and operating the PLC program, of course, you need to dump a project into the controller of the CMMP. And in my case, this is uh, a M0 controller. Let's go offline real quick here. This is the firmware version here. That's the latest firmware. Make sure you have Modbus TCP on. The record sequence and positioning, I don't need. I just turn them on for the heck of it. Um, set up your load size, you know, horizontal, vertical, messages. <clears throat> These are of no, no value. Set up some limits for so, safe stop. Uh, homing method. And all the way down the field bus. So in the field bus, you need port 502, two second delay. That must 100% match the setting you have right here. So. Leftover code, sorry. So there's your two second timeout, and uh, it must match this. So the port 502, uh, the 502 is not specified there, it's assumed. The uh, factory group 
we're using on this particular controller is to the minus two. That means that when you send, you know, 10,000 or 100, yeah, 10,000, that'll be basically 100.00 as far as the number goes. Uh, in this case, I'm using the two channels here. That right there is the FPC channel. So this parameter channel is called the FPC in the best of terms. And uh, I'm just going to close this here. Uh, it's close to many. So basically, we've got we're online. Drive is enabled. And I want to do a start home. So control T or control F2 does a start home. It'll home the axis. Homing's complete when this is set. And then uh, I have only one mode of operation. So the controller is capable of two distinct modes of operation, record and direct mode. Record mode simply from the PLC calls these record tables here. So if I was to say specify number five and say start, it would execute this particular move. You get a motion complete when it was done. Direct mode doesn't require this table at all. Uh, direct mode has three distinct branches of that. There's direct mode position, direct mode force, direct mode velocity. In this code that I have here, I'm showing position moves. And the concept behind all of this is, um, I don't know why I have this right here, but The idea here is that for each move that you're going to do, uh, prior to the move, you need to specify a speed percentage, a position target value, and once you've done that, you can turn on the start bit. And that's what this code here does. You know, it looks like a standard uh, five rung kind of motion block that the automotive guys use. Um, I've got a little sec sequencer right here. That when you turn this mode on, turn that on, turn that on, and right now it's going to cycle through six direct mode moves. Um, I'll go to the FCT so we can monitor what's happening. Notice the check boxes are not on. Basically, look at the target positions. I'm telling it to go to these different positions. Uh, and it's it's going in it's just going in six six moves and then loops back to the beginning. Um, and what else is there? That's about it. Simple.